Horror movies love to throw teens into terrifying situations. There are a lot of reasons for this, to sell the movie to that age demographic, to allow for a lot more social taboos that might not apply to older people, you know, like drinking, drugging, sexing, to set up a whole bunch of hilariously awkward social interactions, or even just because teens tend to be pretty poor at making decisions. It's easy to write off a really dumb choice as something that a teen would just, you know, do. Head into the chainsaw filled basement to impress someone? Teens. Get into bed for some passionate lovemaking while a killer is on the loose in the very same building? Teens. Do a bunch of drugs while you're supposed to be standing guard? Teens. Oh, also, teenagers are terrifying. In between bully filled clicks, popularity contests, and coming up with new mystifying trends every six weeks or so, it's easy to see why a lot of movies put them front and center during assorted bloodletting events. Of course, this makes schools and school adjacents into the perfect places for all sorts of horror movies to play out. College campuses, dance academies, high school dances, even you name it. Always a fun place to have the youth squashed under a car for good measure. Hello horror heads and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host Keegan Hughes and today we are talking about the most egregious of educational institutes. Yes, that's right, it's time for the top 5 most terrifying schools in horror movies. Before we get started on our learning journey, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more Schoolhouse Slaughter. Outstanding, let's head to homeroom. Coming in at number 5, we have Bates High School from Cary. Of course a terrifying bloodbath is going to happen here, just look at the name. In fact, the first terrible event involves blood and a shower. That can't be coincidence. No knife this time though. If you're thinking of enrolling here, reconsider. This is a high school full of weirdos. And I'm not talking about the telepathic mass murderer either. Nope, the biggest weirdos are all regular, terribly adjusted high school students. We're introduced to the average mentality of a Bates high school student early on when a posse of the more popular people decide to pelt a poor period possessed with tampons. Young Carrie has no idea what's going on thanks to her religious lunatic of a mother, and instead of helping her or even just simply ignoring her, these ladies decide they must lambast her. Not the kind of support you want from your classmates. To add to the adolescent horror, we have a totally useless principal, a half hearted attempt to include Carrie in the cutthroat social scene, and a rigged prom queen election. Again, unless totally necessary, don't claim your student card at Bates High. Of course, the most terrifying thing about this high school is the legendary event that took place one fateful night, the Black Prom. After her pity date is given permanent brain damage by a bucket full of pig's blood, Carrie loses control and goes on the telepathic warpath. While most of the room is shocked and disturbed by the bloody prank gone wrong, our psychic protagonist imagines the entire room laughing at her. The doors slam shut, the hose goes crazy, and a man is electrocuted to the point of combustion. From there, all the lovely flammable prom decorations go up in flames and the school burns down. Not the night to remember most people were expecting. Coming in at number 4, we've got Woodsboro High School from Scream. Normally, students would celebrate when their school is shut down for a couple of days. In Scream, a party is thrown, but there's a lot less to be joyous about. Wes Craven's horror flick about horror flicks stands up today as a meta masterwork, but be warned, attending classes at Woodsboro High is not all it's cracked up to be. Forget studying for your calc test, you better brush up on your horror knowledge if you want to survive. Drew Barrymore's character Casey wasn't ready for a spooky pop quiz, so both she and her boyfriend paid the price. And I'm not talking about getting grounded for having poor grades. Once the killings start, not even the principal is safe. Watch your backs heading down the halls, and maybe avoid the extracurriculars. Thankfully, we have a wonderful movie buff in attendance who is able to lay down some ground rules if you are looking to survive the next semester. 1. Never have sex. If you do, you're gonna die. This sounds like one of those abstinence speakers they brought in for health class. Number two, don't drink, don't do drugs. This is a no-brainer for most high schoolers looking to make top grades, but also for people looking to stay alert in the presence of a killer. Number three, avoid saying things like, I'll be right back, or hello, who's there? In a normal high school situation, these are pretty harmless things to say. But for folks aware of the horrific implications of being in a Wes Craven movie, they mean please, kill me, do it now. So if you want to indulge in some forbidden fruit or just act like a normal person every once in a while, Woodsboro isn't the school for you. Slotting in at number 3, Bayfield University from Happy Death Day. If I were a soon to be high school graduate looking for a choice post secondary institution, Bayfield would be very low on my list. Sure it'd be nice to get out of town and the party scene seems alright, but there is a laundry list of red flags planted all over the campus. First of all, what in the nine circles of hell is that mascot? 
Why would anyone want to cheer for a team that has this on the sidelines of every game? Seriously. What is that? The king cake baby after a few years of diet and exercise? Imagine just seeing that thing casually walking around campus soliciting high fives from freshmen. Sends shivers down my spine. On top of the obvious psychopath in the baby suit, we have a notorious serial killer being held at the campus hospital with minimal security detail, assorted murder weapons and bludgeons just lying around for anyone to hoist over their heads, and apparently a faculty that is a okay with students having affairs with their professors. That last one isn't scary so much as it's morally bankrupt, but I digress. As soon as any of this info made it to the general public, enrollment figures would plummet. Your degree would be like an anchor around your neck. Who wants to hire someone from the creepy baby serial killer campus, huh? Ridiculous. On top of all the mundane terrifying things, we also have a malicious time loop forcing poor Tree to experience her death over and over again, on her birthday of all days. Plus, there's a murderously vengeful sorority housemate, but I would assume that would be true on any college campus. Kappa Pi Lambda does not mess around. Coming in at number 2, we have the Freiburg Dance Academy from Suspiria. If you're looking to further your development as a dancer, might I suggest Vaganova or maybe the Royal Ballet School instead? Sure, they'll work you till your feet bleed, but anything's better than working with a bunch of malicious witches, right? While being famous for its ability to elevate its students and having a world class instructor, this dance academy is also well known for dancers falling through enormous sheets of stained glass and having large pits of razor wire lying around. Hmm. Seems a little more dangerous than one would expect from a dance academy. It should also be noted that the heads of the academy will force you to move into the dorms, feed you poisoned food, and then allow maggots to descend from the ceiling upon your sleeping face. Should have stayed in the off-campus housing. Would have been nicer. Cook your own meals. Also, if you're hoping to have any semblance of privacy after hours, think again. At Freiburg, you will have to sleep in the open gymnasium with all of the creepy old women and often find that black clad assailants will stalk the rooms at night. Oh, and I'm leaving out the most important part. The witches that run the academy want a fair deal of their students dead. Good old Helena Marcos is pulling these strings, ensuring that the school stays afloat on a healthy diet of sacrifice and betrayal. Reanimating some corpses might help encourage the students to work harder, right? Personally, I think the scariest thing about Freiburg is the fact that it totally falls apart when the head witch leaves. Leaves. That can't be a sustainable business practice, although I would imagine that most schools have a failsafe in case of leadership failure, but nah, we'll let the place burn to the ground if the head witch goes. At least this time nobody's head exploded. And finally at number 1, we have Class 3B from Battle Royale. This is one field trip nobody wants to go on. Some folks might say that murdering your classmates for survival is an excellent, exciting learning opportunity. Some folks might say that it totally bat crap Looney Tunes. Either way, the students of Class 3B get to experience it. In the Battle Royale universe, the Japanese government passes the Millennium Education Reform Act, aka the Battle Royale Act. After a societal collapse where nobody could find jobs anymore, a huge rift was formed between the youth and the adults of the nation. Every year, a grade 9 classroom is sent to a deserted island and tasked with killing until only one person remains. This is supposed to inhibit youth uprisings, which I guess sort of works. Either way, you get to see high school politics played out on a deserted island with deadly results. If you thought high school was scary before, with all the puberty and in-groups, just wait until everyone has a weapon. On the island, we see all sorts of different levels of maturity that often exist in a high school, with the more mature folks looking for peace or opting out entirely, while less mature individuals go on killing sprees or indulge in bits of hedonism. Clicks become deadlier than ever, with rivalries between classmates evolving into life and death struggles. Friendships are tested, grabby teens get their comeuppances, and the brightest young minds are forced to make terrible decisions way before their time. Director Kinji Fukusaku made the movie as sort of an allegory for how adults treat the youth of the world, making an already unfair world even harder to survive in. School is tough enough, but when you have to be cutthroat to survive, it becomes a very harrowing experience. So what do you think? What is the scariest school on this list? Do any of these schools compare to the ones that you've attended? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more educated ones from Top 5 Dumbest Horror Movie Plots That Made No Sense, Part 2. Kirk Morrison says, I watched Sharknado and my IQ went negative for a month. My IQ is negative to start with, so Sharknado actually put me in the positives for a little while. It was nice while well, it lasted. 
Wade Wilson says, I really like these videos, but come on, using three of the same movies just to fill the slots, you can do better. Who said I was just filling slots? Every Sharknado deserves a spot on that list. Count your lucky stars, I didn't go one through six all at once. A person says, I'm just confused. I say that every day upon waking up. Quidarius Owen says, one second in and I'm already dumbfounded. Thanks, Keegan. You're very welcome. And Clay Schuett says, It all comes down to dumb horror movies are just fun. And the people of this world need more fun and laughs to feel better all the way around. In short, watch more stupid. This is exactly the kind of reaction I was looking for in being stupid while talking about stupid movies. We love dumb. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Yes, it's right. What am I saying? Oh, and I'm leaving out the most important part. What that part is, we'll have to wait a couple minutes for this <laughs> teleprompter to catch up. Wicked.